It's a lot of communication. It's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of uh, listening and paying attention to what people say and bringing people together. And then again, orchestrating that in order to make it a, um, uh, a team that works together. Hello, I'm Zabelita Castillo. I'm an executive career transition advisor and welcome to the second episode of Coffee with Top Elite with Executives. I'll be speaking to the creme de la creme, senior leaders and managers that have crossed my path along my career journey and truly impressed me based on their exceptional leadership skills and charisma. My goal and mission is to share with my audience insights and expertise that can be followed as a success formula. Today's guest is a senior leader from the life sciences industry, who is specialized in supporting pharma, biotech, and health tech companies with commercial strategies and execution, launching orphan and specialty drugs, as well as innovative services. Karsten enjoys turning brilliant ideas into a business. Aside from English, he also speaks fluent German and Spanish. Now I invite you to join in welcoming Karsten Henke. Karsten, first of all, thank you so much for your kindness to join me today and spare time to share your advice and expertise. Now, Karsten, you're coming from the expertise in life sciences. Tell us a little bit about it. What's hot those days? What's cooking? Good morning, Isabelita, and thanks a lot for having me and for bringing me on the show. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, maybe by way of introduction, you, as you just said, you know, I'm a, a, a German passport holder, but actually I consider myself a citizen of the world, having lived, studied and worked in many different geographies. And um, in response to your question, what is cooking? It's, um, um, it's really um, an amazing time right now that we are living and I am happy to, to say that a lot is cooking. So um, I think we probably... In, of course, I refer my I refer to the life science uh, industry, um, and I think we probably all have seen the tremendous impact that the development of vaccines has added has helped us all on a global scale in the last uh, two years. But the good news is, which is sometimes not that much on a public radar, is that there is so much going on in many many fields. Uh, in the life science and especially in diseases and rare diseases and chronic diseases and the development. So there's a lot going on and uh, many, many uh, projects and many products, you know, being developed uh, as we speak. <laughs> oh, that sounds fantastic. That seems a lot happening, which is actually really good. I think we need some kind of good news in the middle of, you know, so much pandemic and monkey box and name it, right? So it's good to know there is some hope for so many other things happening. So, Kasten, on your side, you know, uh, based on everything that's been happening and how have you been uh, improving yourself, the life of people, you know, how have you helped through your work and career and success? So, um, I, I'm, I was actually very happy, very lucky, maybe in part, but also very privileged uh, to have worked on several projects in the, as you said in the introduction, in the field of specialty drugs, that is uh, drugs for very um, specific diseases, like for example, neurology, oncology, and, and also often drugs. And uh, what I have been able to do is actually turn those, as you said, brilliant ideas that usually come from the scientists. In my world, these are biotechnicians, those are med medical people, um, but in other disciplines, those could be computer scientists, you know, those brilliant ideas to really advance them to become a brilliant product or brilliant service, which is already in itself a huge, a huge challenge. In my industry, it can take over 10 years to make that step from an idea to a product or a service. But even if you've done that, that isn't you know, enough because then you need to actually make this brilliant or good or very good product or service into a business. Meaning you need to think about um, commercializing it, selling it, market it. And that is what I've been doing and what I've been concentrating on over the last more or less 20 years or more 
And I'm happy to report that that has worked out quite well for the companies, for the teams, the businesses, and myself. Yes. Wow, how lovely is that? So, Kasten, when you say that you convert the brilliant ideas uh, into actual execution, right? So, are you also involved with developing strategies? You only take, let's say, the final product. Which clinical trial is that? Because I know there are phases of clinical trials. So, how does that happen? You take it from which stage? And what exactly do you do aside from strategies? So, so, so on the one hand, you're absolutely right. So on the one hand side, there is the strategy part in the development that is usually, as you rightly say, in the clinical development, meaning how uh, do I develop a certain, in, in the world of drugs, in the world of yeah. uh, pharmaceutical products um, and biotech products, um, how do I design a trial? Where do I go? And uh, what do I test against what? So this is strategy, but that is more on, still on the scientific, on the clinical development. The commercial side usually hopefully comes in already in that phase and saying, okay, if we later on want to produce a uh, launch, successfully launch this product, we would need data. We would need certain arguments in favor of this new product here and there, but that is the strategic part. And as you said, you know, so this is very important. However, even equally important. Obviously, the, the foundation has to be very good, but then it's about execution. So once you even have a product, a drug, and as I already said, it can take very long. And at the end, hopefully there is a so-called marketing authorization, meaning an approval by the respective um, in, uh, uh, regulatory bodies, the most famous probably the US, the FDA, but in the European uh, Union, that would be the EMA that they grant access. This product can be mm -hmm. brought onto the market. And then it is about execution. It's meaning actually making sure that the right people know about the product and are starting to use it in the right way. Wow, that is exciting. What a responsibility, what a mission you have in your life, Karsten, to make sure that people have those new drugs that will save their lives. That's really amazing. Now, I can imagine that you must have done a lot of things differently to make a difference and bring impact to others and companies you worked for. So what do you believe was the impact or the difference that you brought to the organizations that really helped speed up that process of really making sure things got done and things got approved and the product was actually you know, launched and started to being uh, sold in the market? Good question. You know, thinking about it and looking back, um, it is never an, an, a one piece only or one, one dimension or one perspective, but I would stress or what I would underline probably that I would, that I have tried to always emphasize, focus or bring in, or, you know, have a lot of um, uh, attention to the human factor. What I mean by that is it is important, very important to define very well what you need to do in, in a launch, for example, of a product. Many different things, pricing, targeting, uh, key opinion leader management, and many things come to mind. But then the more important thing, in my experience at least, is how do you actually execute? How do you really do this? And this is never a one man or one woman show. It is always a team effort. And then you need to bring people together. So the human factor in really delivering on what you promise and delivering on what the product is able to deliver or the service is important. That is bringing in people, making sure they work together, making sure they communicate, making sure one plus one hopefully adds up to much more than two, but that is not always very trivial, especially in a very diverse environment as it can be. From a regional perspective, like in Europe, where you have many different countries, cultures, but also on a global aspect of uh, perspective, obviously, but, also in our industry again, because you're bringing together so many different disciplines. You know, there is the scientific, there's the medical, there is the regulatory, then there is the marketing, then there's the sales and so on and so on. So in order to like, almost like directing an orchestra, you know, it's, it's bringing together so many people and making sure that at the end, it is not only, uh, you know, a lot of noise, but actually a very nice um, song or a very nice, um, um, symphony that will lead to the success of this business, of this product. And, and that is the most important thing, ultimately reaching the patients, the caregivers that can then 
work with this new idea with this new concept wow that sounds really uh interesting it's like it never gets boring never the same job oh. <laughs> Kasten, in the middle of all of what you said i can imagine they must have had the time that you really had uh, you know like everybody in like anything in life that you had probably a big challenge something you faced at work would you be able to share you know how did you solve it how did you mitigate yeah so one of my last tasks was actually to help a non-European clinical stage biotech company, meaning they had a product, as we discussed, so everything worked out, they had an approval, and they, know they wanted to launch it in Europe. They didn't have any footprint in Europe. So um, the challenge, the very dramatic, is on the one hand side, there's a company that had so, been, so far been in the clinical stage, meaning in the development. They hadn't had any marketing and sales commercial activities, DNA mindset. That was one thing. So how do you help a company do that? And on the other side, they wanted to enter into a new territory, which was not their own, which was Europe, a different geography. Mm -hmm. So these were the two challenges. On the one hand side, helping a company evolve from a clinical stage into a commercial or fully integrated stage. On the other side, also helping them build a new geography and adding new people. So how did I approach that is, again, going back to what I said before, is involving a lot of different people. So it is never one person. I would like to stress that over and over again. So here, I went obviously to our headquarters and there I got not only the input, but I involved all the relevant stakeholders, clinical development, medical, uh, regulatory, production people, all of that. And I made them part of building the strategy of going to the market. Of course, I added new perspectives for them, which is the marketing and sales, the commercial perspective, positioning, pricing, targeting, and all of that. That was the one step. So we, together we had, and they then felt part of that strategy. And then I went to Europe and I said, okay, now we need to have a team. So again, I went back to the Israeli people, that was the headquarter, it was based in Israel. And I said, you helped me recruit the people. So they were part, again, of recruiting the senior management in Europe. And, and then I, again, involved them in helping me train the new people on the, on the ground. So it, it started to converge into a team. On the other side, once we had the Europeans, I had to make sure that I built the bridge, that I was the go-between the headquarter and the local people on the ground. There were cultural issues, there were technical issues and all of that. So end, end of the day, it's a lot of communication, it's a lot of traveling, it's a lot of meetings, it's a lot of uh, listening and paying attention to what people say and bringing people together. And then again, orchestrating that in order to make it a, um, uh, a team that works together. Wow, Kasten, it's fascinating. I'm very impressed with your multicultural and I would even say emotional intelligence skills you have because the different cultures, you know, so basically you also speak Spanish, correct? You lived in Spain. Is that right? Yes. I so you know, yes. going from a German, uh, you know, brought up culture and then lived in Spain, speaking fluently the language, understanding already the different cultures, then dealing with the Middle East, you know, Israel. So and having to put all of this together I really wonder what's the success formula that you have, what's the secret, but I'll let the audience ask you that because I want them to be really curious to find out much more details about you. But if there is one thing you can share about your success formula, the secret that makes you know how to actually do that, how do you make sure the communication is not only translated, but is really understood and accepted by all, uh, what would that be? I one word is diversity. So so my answer would be you need I have I have a very positive attitude to, towards diversity, meaning I truly enjoy different perspectives. And that comes with an openness to accept different ways of thinking, different ways of approaching things, different ways of seeing and interpreting things, and also the um the acknowledging that you cannot know everything. You don't know Greece or Spain or England. You don't know all the technical aspects in a production or something. So you can only 
gain. You can only win by adding different perspectives and diversity managed in a, in a very positive way or and, you know, being brought together. And again, understanding one another and understanding that that is, for me, a, um, a recipe for success if done well. I would say probably if I am to conclude, I would say you have a very high level of empathy because the only way you can understand yeah. others is by putting yourself on their shoes. Imagine how would they feel if you were them, if you were brought up in that culture, in that environment. And this is amazing, Kassim. Congratulations. That's a very successful story. Um, Kassim, before I have my last question for you, if somebody wants to reach out to you and, you know, maybe network or have you as a mentor uh, or basically just exchange some ideas and insights, uh, how, how would that be possible and how can they find you? Sure. sure. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very open and um, anybody, by all means, if he or she has a question, uh, I'm um, on LinkedIn. There is a, a profile um, with my name. I think if you search my name, it's Karsten Henke. On LinkedIn, you will feed it. There's contact information there, an email address. So, you know, please uh, feel free and reach out. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Kasten. Well, now my final question to you. So if you were to project yourself in the future, you know, let's say 20 years or maybe 30 years from now, um, how would you like to have touched people's lives? You know, what's the impact you'd like to have made? Having had the, um, the, the really the luck or the privilege to work in the industry that I'm working in, I, 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 I can say with confidence that, you know, the products and services that I have been able to work with, that I have been able to, to help and support, really have made the difference in the life of patients, meaning people who unfortunately suffer from a disease, a condition that they didn't pick, they didn't choose. So making their lives or the lives of their caregivers, the doctors, the nurses, a little bit better is really something that I truly enjoy. And that is bringing to the market often drugs or new drugs, new things. So this is amazing. And I, I truly hope that also in 20 years from now, I can look back and say, hey, there are a few things there that made this, uh, you know, their life a little bit better and they're suffering maybe a little less. That is, let's say on the professional level, on the more personal level, having worked with so many brilliant, in, brilliant again, individuals, you know, I, hopefully having been able to help them grow a little bit as a person, you know, in on the professional level, learning more skills, learning more um, competencies, but also on the private level, and maybe here and there having helped to make one or two more people a little bit more happy. Yeah, that would be a nice thing. Wow, that's lovely, Kirsten. It's very impressive. And I'm sure so many people are so inspired by what you said now. They're going to start thinking, hey, what exactly do I want to do now? Because I want to also leave an impact. So thank you very much for sharing. Wow. Thank so you. Kirsten, thank you very much for being here today. It's been amazing to have you. Elizabeth, Isabelita, thank you very much for having me again and uh, all the best to your show and to your program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kassim. Thank you. So everyone, thank you so much for watching and being part of this community. We really hope you have enjoyed and feel ready to revamp up your career now with the insights shared by Kirsten. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to this channel to get amazing insights from the top elite executives across the world. And until next time, stay blessed.